Hi. Um, so I'm waiting for Joey to join. But this is our third um, live interview with SRLA alumni. Uh, there's Joey. So just to give a little background, as people are joining and as we jo we get Joey online, um, this hi Joey. Hello, hello. So to give a little background for whoever is joining us for the first time or is just tuning in, um, this is a monthly uh, speaker series with different alumni who have been through the SRLA program and have gone on to do amazing things um, and sharing their journey and answering any questions from the students or friends of the program. So I saw that there were already a few pre-submitted questions for Joey, and we will definitely answer those at the end of the conversation. If anyone has any questions for Joey, um, as we're talking, please leave them as a comment and we will make sure to get to them at the end. Um, so Joey, why don't we start off with a bit of your background? Um, so where did you grow up? In what part of LA did you grow up? Where did you meet students in LA? Hello, thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky for this opportunity to share my story. I uh, I was born in Orange County, and then I moved to LA County when I was uh, when I was pretty little. Um, I grew up in Torrance in the Harbor area of LA. I attended LAUSD schools, elementary, middle. I went to Narbonne High School. I was class of 2017. So in Narbonne, I was part of Students Run LA. I ran the 2016 and 17 marathons. We had a pretty small team there, and I was actually a member of the first SRLA team at Narbonne. Wow, awesome. We restarted it during my, during my time. And yeah, so I, I tried to get a few of my other friends together who were in cross country or soccer. And we decided we're going to, we're going to run a marathon. So, so I ran the first marathon all by myself. And then in the second one, oh, we wow. got our little team together. And then, uh, and then, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey. Um, so, doing so SRLA. When when you got to Narbonne, was there already an established SRLA program there? Um, how did you find out about SRLA? How did you know you wanted to be a part of this program? Oh, yes. I was in Students Run LA in middle school, actually. Okay. And uh, I had a lot of friends there. They were able to run the marathon. Um, I got injured in middle school, so I kept that dream. I said, one day I will always come back to run the marathon. So I had the opportunity a few years later. Um, I had, uh, there were other st teachers at my school who were experienced in running. They mentored me while we didn't have an actual SRLA team at the time. Oh, wow. I trained with a school on the other side of my neighborhood on the weekends. And then, uh, so I was able to do the first marathon with a lot of support from my family and from my other mentors. And then we were able to get a team started the following year, my senior year at Narbonne. And, uh, and we, we had a few runners. We had about six that ran the marathon during Narbonne's first SRLA year in 2017. And I think uh, the program is still going good. It's still a bit of a small team, but every year uh, there's more kids who are following their dreams of finishing marathon. And, and I'm happy we were able to get that started during my time. So, so you were really instrumental in getting the program up and running at Narbonne High School. It sounds like it wasn't there when you got there, but you pushed for them to create a program. Yeah, yeah, I'm thankful we had some teachers come in. They were interested. And so we all worked together to help build up our new SRLA team and, and then just get us started to help uh, to help us all run 26 miles. And do you know whether there is still a program at Narbonne? Oh, yes, there's still. There's oh, still SRLA. That's so awesome. <laughs> so you, in a way, you left a legacy there. You oh, got something maybe. really good going. <laughs> And just for like anyone else that's in SRLA right now that might have faced injuries. So you said you got injured very young in middle school. Um, what was that like? And what were some of the, th what are some of the practices you used to overcome your injury? And 
you, it sounds like you still loved running and you were committed to coming back to it. How did you get through that? Yes, it was difficult when I got injured for the first time. I had that dream too to run the marathon, which was cut short. And uh, I just kept it in the back of my mind as long as I uh, keep my conditioning up, try to run whenever I can. And when I'm feeling uh, a little hurt, it's, it's okay to take a day off sometimes. And I, I didn't really know that when I was like 13, 14 years old. But as I grew, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what I learned. Sometimes uh, you got to do what's best for your body. And at times that means just taking a day off and, you know, coming back stronger when you can. So you took a little bit of time off and healed and then came back, what, your freshman year to run a marathon? Or did it take a little longer for you to heal and come back? I, I went to two high schools, actually. I went to San Pedro High School in my oh, freshman right. year. I went to Narbonne, and I switched to Narbonne in the other side of the neighborhood. So, and during this time, I, I just explored what I wanted to do in high school. I still kept running around, but I, I joined volunteer clubs. Uh, ma many of our high schools have key clubs, so that's a service organization. I joined, uh, there were, we had junior ROTC at Narbonne. So I got okay. started with, like, military style training sort of early on and then when things settled down i realized uh i want to go back to running the marathon and uh eventually I'm, I'm just glad i had the opportunity and the support from my family and all my teachers who helped me run the marathon by myself on the first time and then that's got amazing. us our own team that's amazing what it how was it to run it all by yourself the first time where did you I guess you're saying a lot of the motivation came from your family and your teachers but it must have been quite difficult to be the only one doing it yes it was it was difficult but I don't know I just love running <laughs> I could uh I would run like 10 miles by myself after school just on my own and I think um just running in general, it made me feel like I had some control over my life, that I could do big things. And, uh, and yes, just knowing that, like, I'm doing something big for myself and to hopefully inspire other people. Yeah. That, that motivated me to keep going on, even if I was the only one doing it at the time. And I had that hope that if I could do it this year on my, uh, on my own, you know, maybe, maybe somebody else will decide they can run a marathon too. So I tried to, I, I guess I tried to set the example a little bit. And it, but but it hopefully sounds I set like, a good example. Yeah, it sounds like you set a wonderful example because you said that the next year six people finished it with you and that now there's a big program at Narbonne and people are running it every year. So you did yeah. set a good yep. example. <laughs> thanks, thanks. And then the second year that you did it before, sorry, I know you brought up ROTC and we'll go there in a second, but I just find this um, so wonderful. So the second year that you did it, now you had friends doing it as well. Did you notice any difference? Was it more fun? Was it easier to do it when you had a group around you? What, was there a big difference between those two years? There's definitely a lot more motivation uh, when, when you have friends doing it. Uh, some of my friends, they were also uh, my close friends from like junior ROTC or from other sports and extracurricular. So a lot of us were in our senior year by then. For us, it was just a way of like finishing off, um, you know, doing one last something big before we graduated. Uh -huh. And and I think uh, it, it it was great having like other friends to to help inspire each other and to just um, – yeah, to just do the best we can because whatever we did on a marathon, we know it will help us in life later on. Yeah, for sure. So I guess that's a good segue to, so you're saying that during this time, you also came across Junior ROTC. So can you give a little bit um, of background about what ROTC is, uh, how you found out about it? Was it something you always wanted to do or you found out about it during high school? Um, yeah, tell us a bit about ROTC for those who don't know about it. Oh, yes, ROTC or Reserve Officer Training Corps. It's a, it's a leadership development program in high school. In high school, it's the junior version, junior ROTC. So many high schools, 
they have this program where they have uh, retired military members become instructors and then they have students they wear uniforms and they do exercise they teach them about the military they don't have to join the military by being in junior ROTC but it can help them and uh, it teaches a lot of leadership skills a lot of the skills that SRLA teaches also and of course because the military uh really emphasizes physical fitness SRLA and junior ROTC it sort of went together for me and those two those two activities they i i spent a lot of time and energy in both SRLA and junior ROTC and they complemented each other mm-hmm. and i think um by me running the marathon it inspired some of my other junior ROTC friends to also you know exercise more to just push the limits of whatever they want to do in life because that's the mission of junior ROTC to try to become a better version of yourself whether you join the military or go to work or go to college and that's the same thing with SRLA too uh just to do the, to be the best version of yourself and to push the limits and whatever you can yeah, do yeah definitely So when you joined ROTC did you have goals of then joining the military or like you're saying you were going there more for learning leadership skills and a lot of the good habits that it seems that ROTC built for you or was it a dream, like was it a stepping stone to college what 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 were the main goals when you joined ROTC <coughs> I always knew I wanted to join the military for a long time. Wow. I'm the first in my family born in the US, but I do come from a family of civil service in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is where my parents immigrated from. So my grandparents both worked in the Bangladesh railway as civil servants. My grandmother, she was uh she she became a freedom fighter. She was a doctor wow. for the troops and there wasn't a civil war in 1971 in Bangladesh. Okay. My grandma told me stories about war about how she helped her people fight for freedom and that always inspired me because I just wanted to I just wanted to make my grandma and to make my family proud. Yeah, so wow, that's amazing. It, yeah. So your grandma So the military was uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I think we need a whole other hour to talk about <laughs> your grandma. We need a whole interview with your grandma <laughs> in Mount Life. Um did she come to the United States with you or that was just your immediate family? Did you get to grow up with her? Yes, my grandma lived with us for the last 15 years of her life. So she told me a lot of stories about Bangladesh, about how she did her her thing for her country, how she believed in a free Bangladesh and that's why that that's what motivated me to, you know, to run also just to be the best version of myself, to do something good for my community and to join the military because i have a history of a uh, service and i want to continue there wow that's that's really amazing so um while you were in the ROTC is that i don't know a lot about it is that something that it's how did you get from ROTC at Narbonne to ROTC at UCLA did you know you wanted to go to UCLA did you go specifically to UCLA because they have a good ROTC program how did how was that connection formed Yeah I think UCLA was a lot of our dream schools back in Narbonne for most for many of my friends from LAUSD too UCLA was you know it's up there we yeah, all want to go there <laughs> So and also I needed to find a way to pay for college financial aid student loans it's it's a lot it's a lot to think about so the US Navy they offered me the scholarship i applied for the ROTC the college ROTC scholarship it's just like a college application basically they ask many of the same questions what did you do in high school how was your grades and so i i was lucky enough to get awarded the ROTC scholarship while i was in high school in my last year so the US navy paid all my tuition at UCLA wow and um, and yeah i i got a lot of help because of the ROTC program now i will have to do 5 years as an officer in the US Navy okay. i'm currently an ensign right now so that's the first officer the ROTC program it provided me a pathway to going from high school to going to college to making it through college and now having a career as a military officer and when you apply for an ROTC scholarship 
is that at any UC or it's only at certain ones if someone's interested in doing that? Um, is that an only UCLA program? Does every UC have that or how does that work? Yes, ROTC is a pretty big uh, national program actually. Uh, there's Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine ROTC scholarships. So Navy has it at like UCLA, Berkeley, USC. So many of the big universities have Navy ROTC programs. Uh, many other universities have Air Force, Army ROTC. So there's lots of choices when it comes to military ROTC programs and all of them offer scholarships. Many of them are full tuition, four year scholarships for school. You can also get two or three year scholarships if you want to join after your freshman year. So ROTC provides a pathway for getting your college degree and then immediately after getting a degree, commissioning as an officer in the military and then having a career uh, starting, off as a, starting off as an officer. Um, and then while you were at UCLA, you must have had a really full plate because you both were trying to get a degree. And what did you get a degree in at UCLA? I was an Asian American studies major at UCLA. I, uh, I switched around a lot, and I think that's something I sort of learned in college. There's a lot of things you can do in life. There's a lot of things you can do in college, too. You could be a science major, social sciences, humanities. And so a big part of my time in college was exploring what I have to do. Um, but when the lessons I learned in SRLA, like we ran a marathon, life is a marathon. So college is a, was a bit of a marathon too. Uh, my first major didn't turn out as good as I liked. So I had a lot of help from the ROTC program provided me a lot of mentorship. Uh, UCLA has many resources. Most UCs and Cal States have lots of resources to help students figure what they want to do in college and in life. So I found out I like the social sciences. I like learning about people. And since I'm joining the military, I'll be leading sailors one day. So I like working with people and the social sciences. That provided me a way to... Uh, I made it through UCLA with the support of ROTC and all the resources we had at the university. So I, first of all, I think that's such a great message for any in, anyone looking to go to college, any incoming freshman. I think there's often a lot of pressure that you need to know on day one what you want to do. And like you said, yep, that's yep. mostly not true for anyone that uh, goes to even like UCLA, like a wonderful institution like UCLA. It's, you shouldn't feel stressed or pressured if you haven't, it, haven't had it all figured out on day one you can make your way through different majors um, until you find one that fits you. And probably, I don't know what advice you would give um, the students, but it's probably better not to stick with the major if you're not really enjoying it. Better to switch and try something else. What do you think? Yes, completely. Uh, so, and then the other thing that I really liked was um, Completely. I, uh, Asian American studies was my third major. So I, I switched around a lot, but eventually you just have to try new things, see how you like it. And, um, and in the end, if you find something that you really like, just pursue it with all your passion and it'll, it'll, it'll make things better for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And I also like the other side of what you said that through some of the struggles you maybe had, you had, um, you had some support in your in your situation. That support was through ROTC. But finding some form of support is really helpful because college can be overwhelming and there's all these decisions you have to make. And if you're doing it on your own, it can be really difficult. So kind of like how SRLA taught us that with the group, we can accomplish so much more. Finding some group, whether it's like um, a club that, that that is also interested in us, similar major to what you're doing or ROTC sounds like it gives you a really um, supportive community, but finding some community that will support you through um, the different difficulties that you face in college. Yeah, absolutely. Without, uh, without the support of everyone around me, that's, uh, that's why I graduated UCLA. That's why I'm wearing this uniform right here. <laughs> um, and what were some of the challenges? Like, I just think I also went to UCLA and I think that 
even just being at UCLA is very difficult. So you were both doing UCLA and also ROTC, and that must have been extremely time consuming. Did you have any challenges balancing these two different passions that you had? Yes, ROTC was like a job. Well, it was a job since it did pay my tuition <laughs> at UCLA. ROTC was my job, and we would. Uh, Sometimes it was challenging when I'd have to wake up at 5 a.m. and we would run around four miles around the school on Monday, Monday, Wednesday morning. The running around part as a marathon runner's that that wasn't too bad. Um, but there, there is expectations and responsibilities that come with being part of ROTC. And it's not just ROTC, any, any job or even internship in general. There's a lot of things you have to like, we had to balance and college and time management that was a that was a challenge for two years and a big part of the challenge was when I realized why am I spending all my time and energy studying something that uh you know that I might not be as passionate about and so um for me after I found a major that I liked after I found I liked learning about people and learning about people that um that connects to my role in the military too as a you know leader of sailors one day um, so that's what, that's what kept me going, realizing that I have strengths. I have, everyone has strengths and weaknesses, but the Correct. most you can play to your strengths, um, things will go better for you. Yeah. And was ROTC able at all to help? I mean, you've said they were, were they there mostly as a supportive group? Were they able to like practically give you some advice? Like, oh, maybe this would be a good fit for you. Or do they provide that kind of mentorship? or more of a community supporting one another? I think they provide a bit of both. We would have um, upper class, we were called midshipmen. So we'd have upper class midshipmen, the students, and they would give us advice on what classes to take for your mm -hmm. major. Because when I came fresh from Narbonne, I, I didn't know anything about college classes. Really, there was just so many classes to pick from. So having that mentorship in ROTC or whatever clubs, you're able to join that's that that helps in just getting advice on what, what classes to take on what other communities to join where to get academic support and resources and i also had officers rotc has um instructors who are active duty officers um from the fleet like from ships or squadrons or or submarines they come and they serve as instructors in rotc and they they make a degree plan. They work with you to make sure you have what you need to eventually graduate from university. So ROTC was probably instrumental in making sure I, I made it through UCLA and, uh, and got a commission as an officer after joining. So I, yeah. I found all those. Uh, I think I was lucky to find a lot of those support and resources, but very thankful for that. Yeah. Um, and then once you are like in your senior year of ROTC at UCLA, are they setting you up for what you're going to do next? How is that transition? Because I know that's a transition a lot of people struggle with going from a university to a career. And it sounds um, like maybe there was some stability knowing that you had some a career after, but how does that transition work? What, what does it look like that year between? Yeah, so in our senior year of ROTC in college, we get uh, what they call service assignments. And we can put preferences in a lot of the times. Uh, uh, the military in general, your preferences, they count sometimes, but it's <laughs> more of what the military wants. So they always need more people in the Navy to be on ships. Uh, we also need uh, aviators to fly planes. We need submarine officers. Um, so the Navy has all these jobs they need filled out and often they go by your merit. So like how good you did in your classes and ROTC. And so I got picked to go on ships. I will be a surface warfare officer in the next few years. So I'll be on a ship out of San Diego. Um, and that's, and that's how uh, the transition sort of works for us. We get assigned our jobs. And then when we commission as officers in our very last week of university and graduation, um, and then we get our orders to start training at, at, the, at um, more, more schools. There's training schools the Navy has across the country. 
So I'm actually going to San Diego next month to start my ship training. And this is your first year of post college. This will be your first year. Yes, yes. Wow. Okay. So I it's very exciting June, for you. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have some stability. I really appreciate that with the military and ROTC day. Uh, it's not easy. The military is definitely not easy, but I think it is very direct, and they do tell you what what you need to do. Uh, some things you have to figure out on your own, but a lot of the things the military they'll they'll give you a path so you can uh, you can hopefully find a way to succeed, like after college. And what? So what was the position that you said you're training to do? Is that was that one of the positions you wanted to do? You're happy with? um where you're headed now I'm happy about it I'm going to be training to be a surface warfare officer so surface warfare those are ships our ships they have lots of guns missiles sensors they have a pretty big engine so surface warfare officers they operate ship systems they lead sailors to operate all those systems so it'll be a mix of like learning about the ship and learning how to work with people and uh and like my fellow fellow sailors there i'm excited because i have a lot of friends from high school who joined the military they enlisted uh straight out of high school so those people are basically my age now and i'll be in the position to hopefully provide mentorship and leadership to them as an officer so it's uh it's pretty humbling knowing i'll be leading people basically my own age out there yeah and these are people that were maybe in the junior ROTC with you at narbon Yes, many of those were actually in junior ROTC and um if they didn't want to go straight to university they they went straight into the military. Uh some of them were also in SRLA. And so it's pretty cool that when I when I see the sailors on my ship next year, I know I'm going to be looking into the faces of people from my neighborhood basically. Wow, that's so that I'm must be really amazing. And it's nice that the ROTC for any students that are interested it seems like it gives you different career paths whether you want to go to university you can find ROTC in the university or if it's not a good fit for you you can go enlist straight in the military and the junior ROTC kind of set you up to do that so there's many options it sounds like Yes absolutely uh for me SRLA and junior ROTC it it gave me some of the skills to make it through college just knowing that you know not everything's going to be perfect but sometimes you'll have to be uncomfortable but it'll if if you keep at it you know you'll you'll be better off than when you were before so that worked for me going through college i have an old buddy he did srla too and junior rotc so now he's in boot camp for the navy he enlisted and i'm pretty sure many of the lessons which i learned that got me through college I I'm pretty sure he's relying on them right now to get through Navy boot camp. And then maybe you will see him, right? Yeah, yeah. Excited for that. And so for people that might not know much about the Navy, does being part of the Navy also allow you to see parts of the world you might not see otherwise? I imagine you will be stationed all around the world possibly. Yeah, so Navy ships go on deployment all over the world. My ship is in the Pacific Fleet. So we have a uh, Pacific Fleet is the biggest US Navy fleet. Um they do deployments all over Asia. Uh sometimes they go through South America, in the Indian Ocean. So I'm excited to be out there because honestly if it wasn't for the military, I'd be a little scared to travel, but the military they uh They they make you travel whether you like it or not. <laughs> you're going to go out there and you're going to see the world. So yeah. I think uh at this stage of my life, yeah, that's that's how that's how I'll have to grow. But it sounds like from what you have said, both students from LA and ROTC have taught you a lot of lessons to face such fears of overcoming fears and doubts and going out and and doing it and doing what you want to do. Absolutely they they all complement each other junior ROTC SRLA the lessons which I learned from there in college ROTC and just in university in general um and that that's the beauty of what I liked about SRLA I think all my peers who did SRLA their uh you know the goal setting the discipline the the drive to just do something a little better than the time you were before 
you know, it, it helps out in so many paths after high school. And I think uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, so asking one of the questions that were left by students, I, maybe this will make sense to you. What is your dream TDY destination? Okay, yeah, TDY, that's temporary duty. So oftentimes the military picks people to go to other places where they're needed outside of their regular duty. So if like my primary duty will be on a ship, they could ask people to go to other places, maybe like to, to a ground deployment somewhere or to train with other countries. So in terms of my dream destination, I want to go somewhere in India. Uh, the Indian military is actually one of the bigger militaries in Asia and the US Navy and the Indian military, they've been doing joint exercises for the last several years. And because I have family connection in Bangladesh, which is right next to India, I, I would love to work with foreign militaries in that region, especially the Indian military, because um, the US diplomatic and military forces, they're focusing on Asia a lot right now. Yeah. And as, as an Asian American myself, it'll, it'll be interesting like to be on the front lines of what the U.S. diplomacy and military is doing out there. Yeah, and is it possible that maybe you will make it to India as part of your Navy service as well? I sure hope so. Uh, they've been doing many, many exercises together uh, with, between the Indian Navy and the U.S. Navy and our other partners in Japan and Taiwan. So the U.S. Navy has a very heavy presence in the Asia-Pacific region. And uh, I'm, I'm, I hope to be out there someday. Okay, yeah, I hope you stay safe. <laughs> it sounds, yeah, but hopefully through diplomacy, you can stay safe and meet many people still. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any advice we didn't go over? Anything you want to mention to the students? Uh, well, to everyone uh, who are considering their next path in life, I guess just remember to take it one step at a time. I remember the marathon, I would take it sometimes mile by mile, step by step sometimes, especially after mile 20 when <laughs> everything's just hurting. So yeah, when you think about that, uh, it, it'll help you get through a lot of the challenges that you might face in college or in work, in life in general. Just take things step by step, mile by mile, uh, and and, and you'll be better off than when you're started. And you'll be proud of yourself for doing something, something big. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and I hope a lot have learned about the ROTC. And I, that sounds like a very um, a, a great uh, path for someone in high school looking for a support group and some uh, structure and ways to get to college and career paths. I definitely learned a lot and I hope the students did too. Um, so I guess we'll sign off with just thank you very much for your time and your service. Um, we're very lucky to have people like you in the military um, and I hope you stay safe. Thank you too. I appreciate having the chance to talk to everyone. Uh, so everyone just dream big, do, do whatever you want with your life and uh, make, make us all proud out there. Have a great evening. Thank you, you too. Bye. Good night, good night.